Backyard Brains presents the Robo Roach. From the Backyard Brains Video Lab, we bring you the Robo Roach Surgery Instructions, circa December 2013. Please note that this procedure is for the Bluetooth Robo Roach. If you are using a beta version, please refer to the previous instructions and its accompanying video. Additionally, we'd like to remind you that the Roboroach experiment and these surgery instructions are designed to work with cockroaches, in particular Blabber ciscoidalis, for the specific purpose of neuroscience education. Please respect and abide by your presiding government's laws and regulations when it comes to animal research. If you have ethical concerns or questions, please refer to our ethics guideline and discussion. All ages are welcome to observe and learn from the Roboroach experiment but adult supervision is required to perform this procedure. As my buddy Colin once said, there are no secrets to success. It is a result of preparation, hard work, and learning from failure. Good advice! Let's get prepared! First and foremost, since the video is a supplemental visual guide for the Neural Interfaces Experiment, we highly recommend that you start by preparing your own brain and fully read through the Neural Interfaces experiment before you begin the procedure. You can find this experiment by going to BackyardBrains.com and clicking on the Experiments tab. It is filed here under Advanced Level and also Invertebrate. There it is. Take your time to read through this experiment to learn about the Robo Roach's background and how the neural interface that you will be preparing actually works. By the way, we have made this experiment available for you to download as a PDF if you'd like to print a copy. Now is also a good time to print out a copy of the Robo Roach surgery worksheet so that you can properly document your experiment just like they would in a university research lab. Okay, now it's time to make sure you have all the necessary tools for the job. You will need 150 grit sandpaper, Loctite super glue gel control. We found that this super glue works the best. Other super glues may not substitute, especially if they are too runny. Silly putty, cotton swabs, a small needle, toothpicks, popsicle sticks, a small amount of flour, a pair of tweezers or fine forceps, a hemostat forcep comes in handy as well, dissection scissors, a low temp hot glue gun with glue cylinders, and unless you have eagle eyes like me, a magnifying glass or a roach scope. Paper towels, a good work light, and a clock come in handy too. By the way, for your convenience, the complete list of required materials is available for you in the Neural Interfaces experiment under the heading, What You'll Need. Feeling confused on how to procure these tools? Well, we've made it easy for you with the Robo Roach Surgery Kit, which includes all the equipment you need, plus a terrarium to house your cockroaches. And of course, you will also need an adult cockroach. These are also available through the Backyard Brains web store. In your Robo Roach Kit, you will find the two-channel microcontroller, a coin cell battery to power it, and three sets of electrodes. Having three electrode sets means you can try the experiment three times. If you run out and need more, we've got you covered with extras available in our web store. We've also created a build instructions if you'd like to learn how to make your own. Set out one electrode array for this experiment. Okay, now let's get started. It's always a good idea to lay out your tools to prepare your workspace for the procedure. Now is a good time to plug that hot glue gun in and make sure it is set to low. You will also need to prepare a cup or mug of ice water. Ice and water not pictured. Next, go ahead and pick out a large adult cockroach. Discoid adults can be identified by a black dot on the pronotum and the presence of wings. Adults will no longer molt, therefore affixing a connector permanently to its head is fine. Do not do this surgery on juvenile cockroaches. As they say, practice makes perfect. So documenting your experiments can be very beneficial for analyzing and learning from each trial. Good record keeping is also essential for any science experiment intending to collect data. To help you document properly, we've created a Robo Roach surgery worksheet. If you haven't yet, print out a copy now so you can document for your experiment. Start by filling out the surgery setup record. You can hold off on taking the measurements for when the roach is anesthetized, 
This will make it much easier. Now it's time for the biology. Begin anesthetizing your cockroach by carefully submerging it in the ice water. Note your start time on the procedure record, page 2 of the surgery worksheet. Continue to record the time at each step and add notes as you progress. Since the roach is a cold-blooded animal, reduction in temperature results in reduction of nervous and metabolic function, effectively anesthetizing the insect. It typically takes 2-5 to five minutes for a cockroach to go to sleep. Just watch for the roach to stop moving and reacting to stimuli, such as a light touch. Once fully anesthetized, carefully remove the roach from the ice water with forceps and place the cockroach on your table. If you didn't earlier, record the weight and the size measurements of your cockroach on page 1 of the surgery worksheet. Cockroaches have a waxy exoskeleton made of chitin. This makes it very hard for the superglue to stick. So, with sandpaper, lightly sand the center of the pronotum to roughen the waxy chitin. The pronotum is their exoskeleton hood with the big black dot on it. Be careful not to push too hard when sanding. Hemostat forceps are handy here to grasp the pronotum. By the way, this is similar to sanding the tops of your fingernails. It's a hard substance without nerves. Sand until the area feels slightly rough to the touch. This will allow the superglue to stick securely. Here's a picture of what it will look like when you're done. Next, wipe the pronotum with a wet towel to remove the debris from sanding. Then, fully dry with a paper towel. Put a dab of superglue on the area you just sanded. Be sure not to touch the glue with your fingers. You want to stick to the roach, not to you. Then carefully place the black connector on the glue with the electrodes facing the anterior direction, which is towards the antenna. Be sure to orient it squarely with the body. The pin should be parallel to the length of the body. The connection should be strong in 1-2 to two minutes. When you are done with this, place the roach back into the ice for 1-2 to two minutes to ensure it maintains the appropriate plane of anesthesia. Now to implant the ground electrode into the cockroach's thorax. For this step and the next two, you may find using a magnifying glass or your roach scope to be very helpful. Remove your cockroach from the water and place on the table belly down. Carefully splay one wing to the side and use the silly putty to hold the wing down and stabilize the roach. Using a small needle, you will lightly poke a small hole in the exoskeleton of the cockroach's thorax just behind the head. Be very careful to avoid the center line as this is where the esophagus is located. The flight muscles located here can tolerate a small poke. This species of cockroach cannot fly anyway, so it does not use the muscles much. Use a careful amount of force, enough to penetrate the hard chitin exoskeleton, but not too much that you poke too deep. Use a cotton swab to gently dry the thorax around the hole you just poked. Now with your forceps or tweezers, carefully grasp and insert the center electrode one millimeter into the hole you just made. It helps to straighten the tip of the electrode as much as possible before inserting. It takes practice. Don't worry, you'll get it. Once you have the electrode placed into the hole, apply a small bead of superglue to the electrode just above where it enters the tissue. Here I apply the glue straight from its container, but I highly recommend using a toothpick instead so you can more precisely apply the glue. Then, using forceps, carefully park the electrode 1-3 to three millimeters into the insertion hole. The goal is for the superglue to enter the body because when it comes in contact with the internal saline, it will polymerize quickly and securely. When that is done, Return the cockroach's wing back to its natural position and place it back into the ice bath for 1-2 to two minutes. Next, we will implant the electrode into the cockroach's right antenna. Take the cockroach out of the ice water and lay it on its back. With the dissection scissors, cut the cockroach right antenna down to 1 8 to 1 quarter inch long. The antennae of a cockroach are hollow, fluid-filled structures with a nerve running down the center. Grasping the right electrode with the forceps, park the exposed tip about one millimeter inside the right antenna. Like you did earlier, dab a bead of superglue just above where the electrode is parked in the antenna. Again, I'd recommend using a toothpick to make it easier to apply the glue. Then use forceps to park the electrode such that the superglue bead partially enters into the antenna approximately two to four millimeters. If needed, add a bit more superglue at the interface, but avoid excess glue. Here's another angle to give you a closer view of how to implant an electrode into the cockroach antenna. When you're done, place the cockroach back into the ice bath for another 1-2 to two minutes to maintain the anesthesia. In step 5, you will implant the left antenna electrode. 
Again, take the cockroach out of the ice water and lay it on its back. Then cut the cockroach's left antenna down to 1 8 to 1 quarter inch long. Then grasp the left electrode and park it 1 millimeter inside the left antenna. As you did before, dab a bead of glue just above where the electrode is parked in the antenna. Then use your fine forceps to park the electrode such that the superglue bead partially enters into the antenna, approximately 2 to 4 millimeters. The superglue should polymerize immediately once it is inserted into the antenna. The point is to get the superglue just inside, otherwise it can easily fall out. If needed, add a bit more superglue at the interface, but avoid excess glue. When you have finished this step one last time, you will place the cockroach back into the ice bath. For the last step of the surgery. You need to tidy the slack in the wire and tether it down. If we don't do this, the wires could easily get snagged and pull out the electrodes. Using your fingers or forceps, carefully organize the wire slack on top of the connector. Try to ensure as little slack wire exists between the antenna and the connector. If anything does accidentally come loose, refer to the failures and fixes section of the neural interfaces experiment. There you will find common troubles and the ways to work through them. Now prepare the end of a small flat surface such as a popsicle stick by wetting it and then dipping it in the flour. Then use your hot glue gun and place a dab of hot glue on top of the wires. Quickly after applying the hot glue, use your floured flat edge and smush down the hot glue. The purpose of the flour is to prevent the hot glue from sticking to your smushing tool. Your roach should look something like this. Great job! You've made it through the Robo Roach surgery. Now it's time to clean up. Put the roach back in its terrarium and provide food and water. Recovery can take up to 2-4 to four hours. When preparing for demonstrations, we typically do the surgeries the night before to allow the cockroach a full night to recover. The cockroach will be ready for the experiment by the following morning. Next, put your tools away and discard of soiled materials. Don't drink the cockroach water. Clean your surgery table and tools, and always remember to wash your hands. Now take your time and complete the RoboRoach surgery worksheet by filling out the third page, the post-op review record. The following morning, you can test the success of your neural interface in two ways. One is to record the neurons with a spiker box, and the second is to microstimulate the neurons with the rubber roach. To begin testing, take your cockroach out of its terrarium. You may find cooling down the cockroach in the fridge for a couple of minutes may make it easier to plug in in the connector. The first way to test is by listening and looking at the electrical activity of the neurons in the antenna that surround your recently implanted electrodes. Start by plugging in the male connector of the probe cable to the female connector of the roach's head. Then plug the other end of your probe into your spiker box and turn it on. You should hear nice spontaneous activity. You can also do some experiments with this prep. Blowing on the roach causes broad neural activation. Try this setup on both the left and right antenna. If you hear spikes, then your surgery was successful. The second exciting way to test your preparation is to stimulate the neurons in the cockroach's antenna and observe any behavioral responses. You can do this remotely from a Bluetooth low energy compatible smartphone using the RoboRoach app. Once you have plugged in the male connector pins of the RoboRoach backpack into the female connector on the roach's head, press the small black button on the left edge of the printed circuit board. This will wake up the microcontroller for 30 seconds so that you can wirelessly connect with it. Open your RoboRoach app and click the Find RoboRoach button. Using the default stimulation settings, swipe either left or right on the screen and watch for any behavioral responses. If the cockroach turns towards the direction that you swiped, your surgery was successful. Good job! Your RoboRoach is ready for the next experiments. If there's no observable behavioral response, review your surgery record, learn from the experiment, and try again when you're ready. If it didn't work out this time, don't get discouraged. Failure has a bright side. It provides opportunities to improve and is an important result when utilizing the scientific method. Albert Einstein said it best, I have not failed, I have just found 10,000 ways that don't work. Once you achieve a working row roach, a whole new world of educational experiments studying neural microstimulation is available to you. What will you discover?
Well, good luck on your rubber roach surgeries. We'd love to hear about your experience from suggestions for improving the surgery technique to anything that you've learned from this experiment. Backyard Brains, neuroscience for everyone.